Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're, we're at a minute past. I see there's still people coming into the room, but uh, we'll go ahead and get started in the interest of time. Uh, I wanna welcome everyone to today's uh, breakfast sunrise session. Uh, thank you everyone for showing up early. I am here with my coffee. Uh, I hope you are as well. And kudos and congratulations to those of you on the Pacific Coast uh, who are joining us at a very early time. Thanks for your, uh, your interest in your time this morning. Uh, we're going to talk today uh, between the Internet Archive and Better World Books about our work together uh, in this year of preserving library legacies together. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm Chris Freeland. I'm the director of the Open Libraries program at the Internet Archive. Um, and I really want to welcome you to, to our session and to, uh, and to this day in the Charleston Conference. I'm sorry that, uh, that we're not all able to be together uh, in person, but I'm glad that we at least have this opportunity to get together virtually and, and share some, some really cool stories of what the Internet Archive and Better World Books have been working on together. So at last year's Charleston conference, Brewster Kale, who is the founder and the digital librarian of the Internet Archive, gave a keynote speech where he announced the new relationship with Better World Books, which is to help fulfill our mission, the Internet Archive's mission, to provide universal access to all knowledge. And today in this session, we wanna give everyone an update on our partnership. And we wanna tell you about some of the ways that we've been working together with libraries to help libraries meet the needs of the communities that they serve during the pandemic. Um, and so here's what we're gonna to cover today. We're gonna to do some introductions. You'll get to meet uh, members from the Better World Books team, um, uh, as well as a, a quick introduction from myself. We'll give you that uh, one year update. You're gonna hear from Dustin Holland, the president and the CEO of Better World Books. You're also gonna hear from Brewster. We got a video recording of, of Brewster and we're gonna share that with you as well on that one year update. And then we want to take you through a couple of stories about how um, together the, the Better World Books and Internet Archive are working with libraries. So we have a story about preservation um, and a donation that was made of, of, of a first edition of Frederick Douglass's oration. We also are going to uh, all then uh, talk through a story about the digitization and the preservation of the Mary Grove College Library. And we'll have a Q&A session at the end. Now, um, go feel free to use the Q&A feature or the chat feature to submit your questions in the moment as they happen, and we will hold all those questions and we'll cover a sampling of them um, uh, towards the end of the session. I also want to mention, too, that questions that we don't have a, a chance to answer, we're going to gather all of those from the session and we'll put together like an FAQ that will be available in the Better World Books exhibitor booth. That's booth 11 um, when the when the booths are open. So uh, I'd like to uh, introduce now, I'd like to welcome the, uh, my other panelists uh, to the screen. Uh, so if you, want, if, you guys, if you all wanna go ahead and uh, um, uh, turn your videos on and turn your audio on, um, I'd like to start with, uh, uh, let's start with you, Ina. How about, a, how about a hello and tell us who you are and, and what you do at Better World Books. Well, good morning, everyone. Like Chris mentioned, he has his coffee and I have my dandelion tea. <laughs> well, I am um, one of the account managers here at Better World Books. I've been working here for several years, um, servicing our academic and public libraries. Um, and it's a great place to work. Happy about our new partnership with Internet Archive and um, looking forward to diving into that uh, donation that we were able to recently do. So excited to be here. Thanks, Ina. Um, how about over to you, Mike? Yeah, uh, I'm Michael Kappas. I've been with Better World Books for 13 years now. I'm the Senior Manager of Customer Experience and Client Services, so I'm lucky to get to talk to libraries, book enthusiasts, and donation recipients every day. Um, and I'm excited to tell you some stories this afternoon, I mean, this morning. Time has no meaning here, right? Um, uh, Dustin, how about from you? Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Chris. I am calling in from our global headquarters here in Mishawaka, Indiana. For those of you that know me, I've been on the library circuit with Better World Books for the past 16 years. I haven't missed the Charleston Conference. I'll be cooking shrimp and grits tonight. And I'm, I'm truly thankful that we're all able to gather virtually. Um, it definitely has pluses, but 
I'll definitely miss the nice weather in Charleston, but thankfully it's 70 degrees here in Mishawaka, which is unheard of. That is unusual in, uh, in early November in uh, Northern Indiana, for sure. Um, so uh, a quick introduction from me. I'm Chris Freeland. As I mentioned, I'm the director of the Open Libraries at the Internet Archive. I am a librarian. Um, I've, uh, before working at the Internet Archive, I've been here for three years. Um, I was an associate university librarian at Washington University in St. Louis, which is where I live. I'm coming to you today from my home office in St. Louis. Um, and I've worked with the Internet Archive for more than 15 years um, as a librarian, uh, as a partner, digitizing books. And now I'm on the inside of the Internet Archive, helping other libraries use the services that we make available to the library and the publishing communities. So thanks everyone for those uh, for those introductions. And what I'd like to do now is move uh, to you, Dustin, uh, for a little bit more uh, introduction and some uh, and some welcome. All right, well, thank you, Chris. And let me start out by thanking you a little further, Chris. You've been a tremendous asset to the Better World Books team as we've um, embarked on this journey with Internet Archive the past year. You're doing amazing work with Internet Archive and you're serving libraries around the world. So I applaud you for all your efforts. We're grateful for what you do and the, the wonderful, wonderful, meaningful contributions that you've made. So thank you and uh, two thumbs up. Thanks much. Uh, thank you. Thank, uh, appreciate hearing that. Oh, you're quite welcome. You definitely deserve it. On that same note, I'd like to give a shout out to our wonderful conference organizers. Leah, Tony, Beth, Katina, Caroline, and everybody behind the scenes working together to bring this phenomenal conference um, together. There's been a, there's always a lot of planning that goes into pulling off the Charleston conference and this year's been no exception. And I'll certainly miss going to the aquarium tonight and uh, mingling with everybody and enjoying our, our traditional shrimp and grits, but I'll be making those tonight. What a year it's been, not only with the pandemic, but with the announcement of the sale of Better World Books that we had been acquired by none other than a nonprofit in Better World Libraries based in California. The structure has made us, allowed us to make remarkable announcements, remarkable advancements in our business the past 12 months. We primarily, as you can imagine, we've been focused on the health, safety, and welfare of our global team. We operate four main distribution centers, three in the United States and one in the UK. We've had an extensive pandemic response, as I'm sure you can imagine, as, an, as an I'm sure each one of you have experienced. We've seen a tremendous increase in sales as readers around the world are looking for content as their libraries have either been closed or they've been in some sort of mandatory lockdown since March. During this time period, we've been able to focus on our mission. Um, we've made plans this year alone. We're planning on spending over $1 million to donate books to where they're needed most. So you'll hear in a moment from Brewster, the founder and digital librarian at Internet Archive about the great work that we've been able to accomplish the past year with Internet Archive. But we're also working with great partners such as Books for Africa um, in their quest to get books to where they're needed most. This year for Books for Africa, and I happen to serve on their board, they will have donated their 50 millionth book to the children and people in Africa. So that's a remarkable accomplishment uh, in their 30 year history. We've also made significant investments in the betterworldbooks.com experience. So this past January, sales as a percentage of our global sales at Better World Books Federalbooks.com was less than 10% of the company's global sales. We've grown that number significantly, and Federalbooks.com sales are more than a third of our global sales right now, which is fantastic. Because for those of you that know, Amazon takes a, a whole lot of that revenue from us. For every dollar of revenue that we sell on Amazon, Amazon takes 38 cents 
So we're able to redirect those funds uh, to and those purchases to betterworldbooks.com, which allows us to invest more in our library partners in our donation program. And that's one of the big reasons Better World Books is, is doing quite well right now. As you've heard, and you'll hear more from Brewster, we've spent the last year focusing on deepening our, our relationship with the Internet Archive and working on the supply chain in particular to make sure that we're able to donate the right books to Internet Archive and get them to their digitization centers and then pres preserved uh, in long-term storage, which you'll hear more about. We focused on not only the supply chain integrations with Internet Archive, but our own. Um, we're processing books faster than we ever have before. We're adding more books to our shelves um, to make them available for readers, as you heard. And we've made a tremendous amount of operational improvements to Better World Books. Globally, we have about 350 employees. So their set health, safety, and welfare is our number one priority. Um, and from that, we're definitely interested in, in getting books to readers where they're needed most. And then lastly here, our big focus in the past 12 months, which is driving our business, and it helps us get these books to where they're needed, whether they're whether it's a purchase made on betterworldbooks.com or it's getting a specific book to making it as part of a donation somewhere around the world. And that's with our pricing, data management, and analytics capabilities. So we've expanded that team, we've hired data scientists, and we're making a tremendous amount of progress um, in just making smarter decisions when it comes to running our business. So with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Chris um, so he can introduce you to Brewster. Thanks, Dustin. Thanks for that wonderful uh, update and for the for the work that you do as the as the leader of Better World Books. This was a challenging year, right? A lot happened. Uh, not only the transfer of ownership, the transition of leadership, but also a global pandemic. So kudos to you for keeping things afloat. You'll notice we've had a, a couple of messages in the in the chat about showing your uh, Better World Books COVID stash, the purchases that you've made. I have them, I have some as well. So uh, I'm currently writing a couple different uh, uh, papers. One of mine, uh, one that I'm reading right now that's really interesting is um, library services to the incarcerated. Um, and then uh, this was another one that I that's really good. Right here, I see my own books. It's about the Women's Building Library at the World's Columbia, uh, Columbian Exposition. So. Um, Take pictures of your books and share them uh, on social media uh, uh, with uh, Better World Books and also um, at the booth. So great suggestion there to, to tell us what you're reading. Um, as Dustin mentioned, um, last year uh, we did make the announcement about the relationship between Better World Books and the Internet Archive. And um, here today, I'd like to give you an update from Brewster Kale, who is the founder and the digital librarian of the Internet Archive. It's great to be here again. I'm Brewster Kale, founder and digital librarian of the Internet Archive. And I wanted to give you a recap of sort of the great things that have happened actually over the last year. And it's good to have some good news. Um, the Internet Archive announced a partnership with Better World Books last year on the main stage. That was our, our big rollout uh, of this idea. And I'd like to say it's all working. Um, Better World Books is now owned by a nonprofit so it's more mission aligned with the libraries and the Internet Archive and Books for Africa, the whole environment, even more than just being a B Corp. Um, they've now donated many more books um, that are now being preserved and digitized. Since this last year, um, we've now um, they've donated over a million books that have not been digitized or preserved by the Internet Archive. So over a million books in the last year have come in and they're continuing to give lots of books to Books for Africa and to others. So all in all, what we wanted out of this um, did, uh, did work. This, it's now been hundreds of libraries, maybe as many as a thousand libraries books have now come 
to the Internet Archive for long-term preservation and digitization. And I'd like to just say thank you very much uh, to the libraries in here and all around the world that are now part of a full ecosystem where books are being purchased from publishers, which pay authors. They go onto library shelves. When, um, when the deaccessioning um, uh, happens in libraries, they go to Better World Books. Some of those books go to the Internet Archive to be preserved uh, and to be digitized. Um, and others are, are, are sold by Better World Books. Um, so it's really working to, to, to bring this whole thing together. Another interesting thing is Better World Books has gone and made it so people can round up up to a dollar uh, and a large number of people do to contribute to the Internet Archive less than a dollar. And tens of thousands of customers of Better World Books have now rounded up and donated to the Internet Archive. So we want to really want to say thank you to Better World um, Books. So other things that have gone on since this in this last year is some publishers are starting to sell EPUBs, like really sell them. Um, not license them with sort of, you know, restrictions, but sell them in such a way that the Internet Archive can preserve those and lend them. PM Press, um, most notably, sold us everything that they've ever done. Um, and they're just fantastic, these EPUBs. But they've also sold us all of their physical books. We've been digitizing those and adding value to those within the library. And we're looking for other libraries to also go and buy EPUBs uh, from, for instance, PM Press. Um, to go and add to their collections. We're now also working with libraries that are more and more in transition, where they're taking large collections off the shelves um, and trying to find good places to put them and not throw them away. And we can digitize and give them back to the libraries for their print disabled collections and their long-term preservation. The Internet Archive is now starting to collect serials, print serials that are now starting to be deaccessioned at scale. So if you have collections, that would be great. And also microfilm. Uh, in this time of COVID, and despite a lawsuit, we're now working with libraries e even more and publishers even more to fulfill their missions. We're all homeschoolers now. So how do we go and support people to be able to make this all work? but it's now working really well in the last year. Libraries, Better World Books, now publishers of EPUBs, all working together. Thank you. Uh, Dustin, I wonder if there's anything else that you'd like to um, add on uh, onto that uh, update from Brewster. Sure, Chris, thank you. So we've done a handful of really neat things over the years, and I'd also like to thank Brewster and the entire team at Internet Archive for for helping us pull this off so quickly. But there's two really unique features that we're proud to announce. So the first is, if you go to archive.org and you're looking for a book and you find that book, you normally have two options. You can possibly borrow the book and check it out if it's available to be lent or if that book is also in Better World Books' inventory, you'll see a link to purchase that book from Better World Books. So you may choose to borrow the book for an hour or days, or when your uh, loan period's over, if you wanna own the book, just go to betterworldbooks.com and, and buy it. We've made it pretty easy. On the flip side, we've also done another cool thing. So if you're on betterworldbooks.com, and you're at one of our product detail pages for a book, you can see all the different conditions that we have the book available in. But if it's a book that Internet Archive has in their catalog and it's available to be loaned, you can actually click the button on our website and borrow the book straight from uh, archive.org. So those are two really cool features that have been very popular with uh, readers on both websites. And I encourage you to take a, take a look at those, try them out and send us your feedback. Chris, back to you. Thanks Dustin. Thanks Dustin. And uh, we'll also, we'll, we'll demonstrate uh, those. Uh, I'll show those in a, in a demo uh, a little bit later on. What I'd like to do now 
I'd like to ask uh, Ina and Mike to come back uh, on screen uh, and tell us about this amazing uh, donation that they helped to, uh, uh, to organize. So uh, Mike, Ina, and Ina, over to you. All right, thanks, Chris. So I just wanna share a little bit about the donation structure at Better World Books. So for anyone that isn't familiar with Better World Books and the donations that we do, uh, we've donated over 29 million books and we've reused or recycled over 370 million books. We have a commitment on betterworldbooks.com to match every book that's purchased with a book donation. And we've done so many different donations over the year and we have so many stories to tell, but we're just gonna focus on one today. And that's the uh, Frederick Douglass first edition. So we've done a uh, C container of donations to Books for Africa that we've mentioned. Uh, we've done school bus size donations to uh, the San Antonio school system to help distribute books during COVID. We've donated a box of audiobooks to retirement communities who still want to be able to have a socially distanced book club experience they can share together. But there's one book in particular, and that is the Frederick Douglass uh, oration delivered on July 5th at Corinthian Hall that we're gonna focus on today. And that item came to us through one of our library partners who's actually a client of Ina's. And for anyone that's not familiar with the work, it is one of Douglas's most studied and thought to be one of his most influential orations that he ever delivered. And when it came into our hands, we knew that it had uh, scarcity. It actually came to our Antiquarian Rare and Collectibles department where we found that you know, this pamphlet had very few surviving copies. And luckily the seminary that we received it from had the thought to rebind it in buckram and keep it as preserved as possible. Uh, originally when he delivered the speech, if you wanted a copy of it, you could contact his office and for a dime, they would print a pamphlet and send it to you. So that's kind of the origins of the item there. Uh, with it, we knew that it had potential to make a huge impact and that we wanted to ensure that it was in the right collection. So this pamphlet that we had for a number of years was constantly kind of in our mind of, you know, where is the right home for it? How are we going to make sure that it has the widest impact possible? So when we partnered with Internet Archive, uh, we really were able to start thinking on a wider scope with it. So Dustin had actually visited Enoch Pratt Free Library and had seen that when he walked in the building, Above his head was the quote on the wall from Frederick Douglass that uh, once you learn to re uh, read, you are truly free. So that started all of our gear spinning, light bulbs going off and thinking about the impact that we were going to be able to make. So we made the decision to present the item to Enoch Pratt Free Library at the Library Journal Conference this year. But prior to uh, sending the item to the library, we were lucky enough to have our friends at Internet Archive digitize and preserve the item and make it available online so that not only will the uh, surrounding area of Enoch Pratt be able to go see and experience that oration in person, but you can go and study it on a global scale on Internet Archive today. Uh, Ina, do you want to tell us a little bit about the library where the item came from and the Enoch Pratt collection? Yes, yes, indeed. So um, as you heard before, I am the account manager, one of the account managers here at Better World Books. And I am on the front lines, if you will, um, working directly with our partners, um, our library partners, and um, always in the discussions of what do we do with our collection? You know, what, 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 how can we keep these books from being just put in the trash? Um, that's, that's always a conversation. And um, <clears throat> I'm just thrilled to be able to reassure them that we go out of our way. We go out of our way to try to find the best homes for these books. And in this book in particular, um, it took us a while, eight years. You know, it seems like a long time, but we did our very best in trying to find the best place for this home. I mean, for this um, pamphlet. And we've, took, we've taken it to the conferences. We've tried to um, source it through different antiquarian outlets. Um, but it wasn't until now you know, I believe that everything ha happens for a reason and at the right time. And, you know, we now have our partnership with Internet Archive. We were able to find um, a, one of the best places possible for this book at the Enoch Pratt Free Library. They have that Frederick Douglass is well studied and researched there. Um, so not only does it have a place there, but we now offer it 
for free on the Internet Archive for everybody to be able to enjoy. So when we told the library about this opportunity, um, they were just thrilled. They were so happy to know that, you know, we were able to find a home for um, for this book. And it's just stories like that that inspire that keeps me you know, thrilled about working for this company and being partners with Internet Archive, being able to preserve the books because we all believe that, you know, believe in the power of knowledge. Um, so it was just wonderful. And so I was thrilled. The library was thrilled, you know, and this is just awesome. So now everybody can enjoy this piece of work. You know, this is just wonderful. So, yes, happy to be a part of it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's one of one of the my favorite things about Working with Better World Books is that we're able to help libraries support other libraries by taking this gem from one collection and it put, giving it to another collection where it, it's just such a natural fit in their African American studies. Um, you know, it, Enoch Pratt, if you're not familiar, is in Maryland. Uh, Frederick Douglass was a Maryland native. So as Ina mentioned, he's very well studied there. It's just going to be something that I think for years students are going to be coming and being able to experience firsthand and kind of live in that moment of history. So thank you so much for letting us kind of talk about this donation today. Uh, we've got some additional information on it that we'll be putting in our booth this afternoon. So you can stop by and see kind of the full story of how it was presented to uh, during the Library Journal Conference. Thanks, Mike, and thanks, uh, Ina. Uh, it's it's great to see your uh, your passion for the for the work that you do and the and the meaningful work that Better World Books does. Um, as uh, as both Mike and Ina mentioned, the Enoch Pre, uh, Enoch Pratt Free Library is uh, if you're if you're not aware, that's basically the uh, Baltimore City's uh, public library. So it's a it's an amazing library. It's an important collection, uh, and it's great for this first edition of Frederick Douglass's work to to find a a, a preservation home where it can be ex, uh, exhibited and displayed and be part of a research collection. And also, uh, it's great that there was the foresight to think of digitizing this work that's in the public domain um, and making it available uh, to all through archive.org. So thanks again for, uh, for your foresight and for the uh, for for making that donation happen. So I wanna transition now uh, and, and talk about another story uh, about a library that is, that is in transition. And so we understand that um, uh, those of us working in libraries and in publishing know that, that libraries are facing tremendous challenges as COVID-19 continues to disrupt our educational system and our library uh, services. And what I wanna do today is to tell you another story about uh, the preservation of the legacy of, uh, of works. And in this case, this is the library from Marygrove College. So Marygrove College was founded in 1905 by the Sisters Servants of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. It's a Roman Catholic denomination. And they moved to their Detroit campus, which you're seeing here uh, in 1927. Marygrove was originally a woman's college. It became co-ed in the 1970s. And in recent years, it was known for its graduate programs in human resource management and social justice. But in 2017, facing financial hardship, Marygrove eliminated its undergraduate programs. And then in January of last year, the Board of Trustees announced that the entire college would close in December of last year. Now, Better World Books, uh, uh, Marygrove College had a relationship with Better World Books and they would send their weeded materials years to Better World Books, but as they were closing, as they were looking at uh, what do we do with the entire library, so a central question for, uh, for Dr. Elizabeth Burns, who was the president of the college, was what would happen to the library and its 70,000 volumes of books. They, because the entire college was closing, they didn't want to sell it off. They didn't want to have it piecemealed out. They wanted the intellectual unit. They wanted entire library to be preserved and uh, to be available. And I want to tell you. What happens to the books in a library when a college closes? 
What happens to the community that calls that institution home? When I heard that Mary Grove was going to be closing, it broke my heart. It broke my heart that there would be other students who wouldn't understand the social justice perspective that an education here gave you. It breaks my heart that the sisters had to give this up. In 1905, the Sisters of the Immaculate Heart of Mary founded Mary Grove College, training generations of women to be teachers and social the tradition of socialist values, eventually growing to 70,000 volumes. Think of all the students that sat at these tables and struggled with these books and wrote those papers. What are you going to do with that spirit? Who can be trusted with that? I'm Brewster Kale, founder and digital librarian of the Internet Archive. The idea is to build it, dive into it, and then be able to add back their voice into the library. You borrow something and you have to return it. But when you return it, you should be better off for having had it. So we showed up, there were 40 people working to pack up this library into boxes and putting them on trucks. And those then are digitized, then the digital copies are put online, but in digital rights management to make sure that they are lent only one reader at a time. Today, less than a year after the library closed for good, the Mary Grove College Library digital collection is available to people everywhere. When they told us that they were going to digitize the library, didn't know exactly what that meant. So actually seeing it now, this, this was a stroke of genius. This internet library stuff is a pretty good idea. A library is much more than the books on the shelves. It is the center of a community. It reflects a history of 100 years of interests and passions and collections that have been built by librarians, faculty, students. I borrowed something from you. Might be a thought. And that thought made me better. Now what can I do with that thought that returns it to you in a way that makes you better? And having that collection all online to be used by people all over the world. That is the idea of the blossoming of this next generation of Mary Grove College Library. A tower of ivory swathed in a love so bold, a beloved dream of a sister of soul. As we move forward to a bright new day, the values we cherish uphold and sustain are born in new generations, tower of ivory aflame. This may be one of those moments where it's kind of good for us to be alone in our uh, in our rooms because you can feel free to ugly cry <laughs> if you need to. Um, I've seen that video in working in the production of it. I've seen it dozens of times and it still makes me well up every time. Um, so the the decision to donate the books to the uh, to the Internet Archive for digitization and preservation means that that Marygrove College Library will live on through generations of digital learners. And what I want to do now is I want to show you what we can do with that library now that it's been digitized. So the Internet Archive has a, a long standing relationship with the Wikimedia Foundation and with Wikipedia itself. We've um, done a lot of work together over the years. We're like minded organizations in support of uh, uh, similar and common goals. So uh, we, we wanted to make sure that when people are going online and searching for information and reading information at Wikipedia, we wanted to help connect 
those facts that people are encountering online, those assertions that are being made with the verified information that comes from our library shelves. And so I wanna uh, show you now, the, uh, I wanna do a live walkthrough of a demo of the connection that we've made around citations between Wikipedia and the internet archive. So I'm gonna switch over now uh, and do a, a live demo of, of, uh, of that walkthrough. So, we're here at Wikipedia. Uh, we're at the Washington Alston page. Uh, and Washington Alston was an American poet and painter. His work is in places like the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, uh, as well as other, uh, other museums. Um, and uh, if we scroll down here into the Wikipedia page, down to his biography, the, you, you'll see that the Wikipedia editors have made some assertions about Alston's life. They've said here in this first section that Alston was born on a rice plantation on the Waccamaw River near Georgetown, South Carolina. Then the editors then go on uh, to tell us a little bit more about his mother and his father, and they've referenced that. They've cited those facts from this book. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to jump down into the references section. I want to look at that uh, in a little bit more detail. And you can see that the Wikipedia editors have said that those assertions about Washington Alston's origin, his origin story, if you will, um, were uh, contained in this book, The South and American Literature by Jay Hubble, who um, uh, pr uh, printed or published in 1954 by Duke University Press. Now, the Wikipedia editors have taken this even a step further. They've done a really good citation, and they've said that those facts occur on page 274. You can see that that has been part of the citation. And this is what the Internet Archive has been working on in collaboration with Wikipedia. We did a citation analysis, and we extracted out all of the books that were cited by ISBN. And we used ISBN because it was a good sort of one-to-one -one direct match, although everyone understands ISBNs, they're not totally unique, but it was a good place to start. So we extracted out all of the ISBNs and we've compared that to the books that the Internet Archive has digitized and where we've made them and where there was a match, then we have uh, put that link into the citation in Wikipedia directly into the Internet Archive. And so I'm going to show you that now. So by clicking here on page 274 or on the title, I will, as long as everything is working with the Internet tubes today, um, and it looks like things are just a little bit slow, I will be taken directly into page 274. And so uh, let's do a little uh, reference check here. I'm going to scroll down and see a little bit more information. We are looking at the book, The South and American Literature. Uh, it was uh, written by Jay Hubble. It was published in 1954 by Duke University Press. So we are looking at the, at the right work. Um, and I'm going to use the, uh, the, the scrolls or the, the features of, of the uh, website interface to zoom in, see a little bit more detail. Again, do that final check. Yep, we are on page 274. And in fact, here we are on the section about Washington Alston. Now, we came here because we wanted to check a fact. We wanted to, to learn if, in fact, the, uh, the, the origin story that was committed in Wikipedia for Washington and Alston was backed up by, by other published information. And in fact, it is. You can see here uh, that Jay Hubble, again, the original author of this work, um, uh, committed to, uh, to paper that Alston was born on a rice plant on a plantation on the Waccamaw River in South Carolina, not far from Georgetown. So we've just checked a fact online. We've gone to Wikipedia. We've encountered assertions made by Wikipedia editors. We've seen that those assertions were cited. We've checked that citation. We've looked at the citation. We've seen that it was, you know, a good fully formed citation with dates and authors and publications uh, uh, and, and the publisher. And then we've gone, because the Internet Archive has digitized this book and because of our relationship with Wikipedia, users now, anyone who wants to, to check that fact, has single click access into these verifiable facts that are contained within our library shelves. This book was, in, uh, was published in 1954. There isn't a commercial EPUB available for it. The only way that people can read the South and American literature is through the printed version or now through this uh, copy that the Internet Archive has digitized that we've preserved the electronic available through controlled digital lending. 
I think that's really important. Um, and we hear that from our users, that they also think it's very important and they're really happy to have, uh, to have this feature in place. It, it just, it helps. It helps all of us, any information seeker from uh, whether you are a junior high student working on a, uh, on a, on a paper for class or doing you know, academic research uh, or writing a book, we get a lot of information. We get a lot of messages from authors who are using our books uh, online uh, for, their, for their own research and for the creation of new works, which I think, again, is just really amazing. Now, Dustin um, earlier mentioned that, that one of the things that we have done uh, in, with the Internet Archive, uh, between Internet Archive and Better World Books, is to include a purchase link. And you're seeing that here. So every time we draw a page at the Internet Archive, a book page, we go and ask, uh, we go in and, uh, and hit an API at Better World Books that says, do you have this book in stock? And this check happens for books that are either books that are um, uh, used books or newly published books. So I'm going to click on the purchase link now um, because when we drew this page, it did show that there was a, a book in stock. So I'm going to click purchase. I'll be taken now. I'm, I am being taken to the Better World Books page. Um, and you can see that I've now landed on this page where uh, the South American literature is for sale. Again, this book was published in 1954, so I wouldn't have expected to see new copies uh, of, the, of the book for print, but we do have used copies. And so uh, uh, if you are interested in purchasing the South American literature, you can buy that uh, from, from Better World Books. In this way, with, this, with our connection, we are helping connect book lovers with the books that they are seeking. And I showed you earlier that um, we talked here about our, our uh, COVID stash of, of purchases. I have encountered the books that I've purchased from Better World Books the majority of those books I have encountered through uh, my research on the Internet Archive. I found that that book was something I, I was able to, to look at it online. I was able to see, yep, this is in fact a book that I, for me, that I would like to, uh, to bring into my personal library. And so then I purchased it. So I, uh, I am a, an avid, uh, I like to read physical books. Uh, um, ironically, maybe uh, surprisingly, given the the work that I that I do in helping to make you know millions of digital books available, my personal reading preference, especially for something that I'm reading critically, is to read on paper. I have the the privilege and the luxury of being able to buy these books and to bring them into my private collection. But we understand that that's not the case for many people around, and certainly not for large numbers of people around the world. For many people uh, in uh, uh, in developing areas in, uh, who are part of marginalized communities, the electronic access uh, that the Internet Archive provides to these books might be the only way that they would get, uh, that they'd be able to, to access this book, and especially one like this from, uh, from the 1950s. So again, uh, we think this is a, uh, we hear wonderful feedback from our users, from the uh, patrons at the Internet Archive, from Wikipedia users, and from uh, Better World Books customers about the, the interaction here and this relationship between Wikipedia, Internet Archive, and Better World Books. But I want to show one, uh, I want to bring this full circle back to the Marigrove story. Uh, and so I want to show you where this book came from. So um, uh, you can see I'm, I'm here at the front of the book. I'm going to flip through. I'm going to do another zoom in. Uh, and you can see the book plate. This book came to us from the donation from Marygrove Library. We were able to check this fact online. We were able to connect Wikipedia users with the verifiable facts in this book because Marygrove donated this book to the Internet Archive so that we could digitize the book preserve the physical copy and make that digital copy available for users online through our lending library. That is a, a powerful demonstration of how you as a library can help inform a global citizenry by making your, uh, your discarded materials available. Uh, with our relationship now with Better World Books, we get a copy, the Internet Archive get a, gets a copy of any book that we haven't already seen, that we haven't already digitized. So your materials may already, are probably already flowing into our uh, digital shelves and being connected with Wikipedia and with other, uh, other resources. So 
um, with that, what uh, now is move into uh, Q&A and to see if there's anyone who has any questions for us. And uh, please feel free to use uh, the, the Q&A feature or the um, or the chat if you uh, if you have a question. Again, uh, the do please do feel free to uh, to share your uh, your COVID stash, the other you know the books that you have purchased from Better World Books uh, while you were uh, while we were uh, here at home uh, during various levels of quarantine. Um, we have had a, a question that, that came in earlier, and this is probably for Dustin. Um, the, the question is from a, a library who is wanting to know how available, uh, how open is Better World Books? Can, can libraries send their materials to you now? Chris, that's a great question. So we are fully open and fully operational in all four facilities the three in the US, we've got one in Reno, we have one in Mishawaka, Indiana, we have one in York, Pennsylvania, and then we also have one just outside of Edinburgh, Scotland. And we are uh, fully open, just reach out to your account rep representative or client services and we gladly facilitate your shipment of books. So the answer is a definitive yes. Bring those, uh, bring those books in. Um, I'm, in the interest of time, I'm not seeing any additional questions. So here's what I'd like to offer. If you have additional questions, please um, visit the Better World Books booth uh, uh, towards the, uh, throughout the exhibit today. I'm also going to paste here into our chat. Um, we have uh, at the Internet Archive on our Twitter stream, we've listed out all of the links from today's session um, uh, in, a, in a Twitter series. And so if you'd like to learn more, if you'd like to, uh, to follow along on any more of these, uh, these stories, please, uh, please see our Twitter stream and, uh, and, and read more. There are two last things that we'd like to, uh, to leave you with as we wind down today. So uh, we very quickly covered a lot of ground here in a, in a short period of time. Um, and if you'd like to learn more about how the Internet Archive's controlled digital lending environment works, how we make those books from the 1950s uh, uh, available to users online, we have a webinar coming up on November 17th. Uh, that uh, at 2 p.m. Eastern, where I'll lead a session talking about how controlled digital lending works for libraries. It'll be an hour long session. We'll get really deep into some details um, and you can register uh, for that. You can find the link uh, there on our, um, on our Twitter feed. Uh, a question that just came in that, um, that I think would be uh, great to, to cover here um, is, uh, is it possible to text mine with uh, Internet Archive Corpus? The answer is yes. We have a number of data miners who are uh, working with us directly to do uh, text analysis um, at scale. And so we'd be happy uh, to, um, uh, I, can, I can help connect you uh, uh, with the ways in which you can, uh, you can run that analysis. Mike, um, I think you also have a, a, an update too, right? Uh, I do, but actually we do have a couple questions from Pathable um, that I'd okay. like to, to read out for us here to answer. Um, Chris, this big question from you. Uh, Better World Books uh, does not accept bound journals. Is there a route for bound journals to Internet Archive? Yeah, thanks for asking that. That's a great question. So um, I, I think this point is uh, is one that we want to uh, kind of underscore. Um, so uh, I worked for a library that couldn't use Better World. It didn't weave materials uh, to Better World Books. Um, so if you're in a, if you are a library that is, uh, uh, if you can't weed your materials and uh, send them to Better World Books, you can send them to the Internet Archive. As a non-library, we can take your books and uh, that includes bound journals. We are interested in gathering uh, bound journals interested in preserving information. We are interested in keeping materials out of landfill. So a long-winded uh, way of saying, yes, uh, we are uh, gathering bound journals. And if you're interested in learning more about that, you can reach uh, me directly at Chris Freeland at archive.org. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Um, and it looks like a couple attendees would like to know where they could see the Marigrove video again. 
That Marigrove video is shared um, on our Twitter feed. Um, you can find that uh, we've linked it. Uh, our, our Twitter handle is at Internet Archive. Um, you can also uh, find it on our blog at blog.archive.org. And it's popular. We've, we've uh, I think there are uh, uh, thousands of, of views of the of the of that short form video, um, really. Uh, and if you're interested, like let uh, share it on social media, let more people know about it. We think it's just a it's a beautiful, heartwarming story. And looks like another question about if someone is interested in sending microfilm to Internet Archive, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? Microfilm, yeah. So uh, the let, let me type a couple of things here into the um, into our chat. My email is Chris Freeland at archive.org. So feel free, anyone who has a question uh, about microfilm or donations of materials that Better World Books um, doesn't accept, uh, feel free to reach out to me. And I'm also um, going to uh, copy here uh, and paste into the chat a link to that Mary Grove College Library uh, video, which also includes a link to then the uh, 70, the, the digitized collection, which has more than 60,000 of the books from Mary Grove College uh, available. Uh, another question here that popped up into the uh, Zoom chat is, uh, does that include microfeature, just microfilm? Yep. Microforms, bring them on. Uh, we'll, we are uh, we have a strategy for digitizing microfilm. We're working out microfiche um, again. Uh, we understand uh, from my own experience as an associate university librarian, I know that those micro um, form collections are um, increasingly taking up a lot of space and not seeing very much use um, and have been supplanted in some cases by um, other materials or uh, uh, databases and digital collections. Uh, we want to preserve those. So the answer is yes. And one more question from Pathable, Chris. Um, can anyone uh, use the services that Internet Archive offers, or do they have to be associated with a library? Yeah. So the Internet Archive, as a library, we lend to the world. So all it takes to get an Internet Archive library card is an email address and an internet connection. And we understand that that is not necessarily a low barrier at global scale. But it is what uh, the minimum that you have to have to be able to check out books at the Internet Archive. So anyone can get a library card from archive.org. Um, go to archive.org to sign up for a card. And with that library card, you can check out up to five books at a time from our lending library. So uh, yes, it's available to anyone. And I'd encourage you uh, to, uh, to, to sign up for a library card and to, and to check out books. We have uh, more than 1.8 million modern books, a total of more than 4 million texts uh, that are uh, available uh, online. Anything else, Mike? Thanks, Chris. Uh, looks like that's all the questions. Great. Um, uh, so then, Mike, I will throw to you here uh, for the uh, for any uh, final updates about the about the booth. Sure. So we will be open at the Better World Books virtual booth uh, for all of the open exhibiting hours today. I believe the next one is 2 p.m. Eastern. So if you have any questions about uh, Better World Books or anything that you learned today, feel free to stop by and have that chat with us. Um, also, there's live chat on our booth and some files that you can download for some more information if you would like some handouts. We've got nice visual guides on what our material guidelines look like and how our program Um, the, oh, sorry. So, and additionally, you can visit services.betterworldbooks.com and tomorrow we will be presenting for all of the open expo hours as well. Uh, if you have any questions for us directly, you can go out to the landing page on Pathable and you can send us messages as well through there. And we'll be happy to field any questions should you wanna ask them in a one-on-one -on -one environment. Thanks, Mike. And also, I, I believe uh, you mentioned you were also going to be gathering the questions from today's session. Maybe there were some that we didn't get to get a chance to address, but they're going to be available in the booth. Is that right? Right. So we're going to take all the questions we got from Pathable and Zoom, uh, do some text based answers, and we will put them in the booth as a file that you can access. That's great. Thanks, Mike. Um, uh, looking at the time, uh, Dustin, I'd like to, uh, to ask you for uh, final thoughts for today. Perfect. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, Mike. And thank you, Ina. 
we appreciate y'all sharing your, your passion with us. It's very evident y'all are passionate about getting knowledge to where it's needed most. I'd also like to thank our library clients that have joined us this morning. Y'all are an invaluable part of this ecosystem. Y'all are the reason we're able to, to bring this knowledge to the world, and we truly appreciate your partnership. For those of you that don't work with Better World Books or you're contemplating a project, we'd love to work with you. We'd love to welcome you into the family so we can help get your deaccession books to where they're, where they're needed the most. We're on track this year to double the impact that you heard Brewster mention. So we're, we're delighted to do even more this coming year. Um, as, as you heard, we're fully open, we're fully operational. We are hiring um, across all of our distribution centers in the United States. Uh, we're definitely looking to increase the impact and serve readers around the world. And with that, I think the, uh, the word of the day that I've learned today is the COVID stash. So for those of you that have a COVID stash, uh, we, we thank you. We hope you'll partake in our new loyalty program. And if you wanna drop me a line, I'd be happy to send you our friends and family discount code. Feel free to reach me at dustin at betterworldbooks.com. Uh, happy to, Happy to help you increase that COVID stash and thank you for your support of Better World Books. We greatly appreciate it. Thanks, Dustin. And just a final note uh, of thanks to everyone. Thanks for your time. Uh, thanks for your attention today for the great questions. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll follow up with additional questions. Uh, and uh, I hope everyone has a great day at the Charleston Conference. And I hope maybe next year we can do this all in person. Thanks much, everyone.